Ironically, Ham is part of the original London, what is left of Hampstead after the city has been mostly flooded by the very kind of ecological disaster that has been mooted by many in recent years. If self-dystopian narrative, uh, in self-dystopian narrative, the low-lying lands, presumably worldwide, although the text focuses on Britain, have been drowned by the sea. This disaster caused by the effects of global warming, one guesses, but it's only ever implied. Um, Self's novel does, does, does chart the literal outcome, actually, because across the first and final pages and the inside front and back covers of the first hardback edition are several maps, including the last one marked the Ing Archipelago in the year of our day 523, Carl and Antoine's route to Knot. The two examples of cartography make evident to the reader, unless they're completely dense, that the, only the high ground in Britain has survived. Ham being Hampstead, Chill the Chilterns, and with Nottingham reduced to Knot. The second chapter follows immediately, which opens in 2001, with repeated reference to Dave in his cab, mourning in the effect the loss of Carl after the marriage failure. Quote, hunched over the wheel, fog lamps piercing the miasma, Dave Rudman powered his cab through the chicane at the bottom of Park Lane. The cabbie's furious thoughts shot through our windscreen and ricocheted off the unfeeling world. And despite a stark contrast in setting in these two periods, the implied interrelationship emerges quite quickly and pretty strongly. Uh, the recent past representing the contemporary in effect consists of reflections on certain periods indicated by month and year, which are in order of their presentation, December 2001, June 1987, April 2002, September 1992, August 2002, October 2000 and October 2003. And these are in and around London. The supposedly distant apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic future consists of the years linked to months and seasons, again in the order of their presentation, June 523 AD, AD after Dave, Sep 509 to 10, October 523, uh, Kipper, which is winter, 523 to 4, Kipper 522, March 524, and June 524. As self informs his readers, the contraction AD refers to, quote, dating is from the purported discovery of the Book of Dave. Now, the basis of the future religion, which is called Dave Inanity, um, has emerged from the rantings of Dave, inscribed during and after his divorce, uh, echoing almost uncannily, and, and this is echoed almost uncannily in the pattern of lives of its adherents in England and in that future. The religion's very name is a phonetic contraction of Dave, based on its London local pronunciation, Dave, conjoined with the word inanity. As the reader finds, Dave has had his ravings inscribed semi-permanently and printed onto metal sheets. When they are retrieved centuries later from the site of his ex-wife's garden in Hampstead, they are taken as a sign for a new emergent religion called, the, called Dave inanity. Ironically, this book is described during the time of Dave's treatment by his psychiatrist, Dr. Jane Burnell, the colleague to the ever-present Zach Busner. The scene accentuates, accentuates the ludicrousness of people later following any such religion and who use its tenets to justify the death of others who question such beliefs. What's he called then, Busner turned from the window and smiled at Jane. She saw she had his attention. As ever, her oblique way of introducing a case had drawn him in. Dave. No, Zach laughed. Not the patient, the God. Dave. Dave too. Dave the patient, that is, that is, is a taxi driver. And Dave, the God, that is, has revealed his text to him. Do you know what the knowledge is? The knowledge? It's the encyclopedic grasp on London streets that a licensed cab has to have... Oh, so it, it, is that it? Busner plodded to the desk, immured himself in it behind a pile of buff folders. Is that the revelation? In part, my patient Dave Rubman says that the 320 routes that make up the knowledge are a plan for a future London. 
Between them and the points of interest at each starting point and destination, they have made a comprehensive verbal map of the city. And we find that Dave has added, quote, a set of doctrines and covenants as well, and quote, a bundle of prescriptions and injunctions that seem to be derived from the working life of London cabbies, a cockeyed grasp on a melange of fundamentalism, but mostly from Rudman's own vindictive misogynism. In the chapters set in the future, self-reader encounters suggestive interconnections with the past. Following its founder's profession, the priests are dry labelled drivers, the elements of the cab provide a new theological vocabulary, the future society redresses the ills suffered by the lower classes in the new millennium, and the approach to the 2000s, an abject existence in post-Thatcherite social order of which Dave, his family and friends are symptomatic. His father is an alcoholic, his brother suffers drug psychosis, and his fellow father's first followers, who uh, are, uh, are protest against you know, uh, being uh, removed from their children, are enraged by the, this separation. What the future society does is reverse these trends through an atavistic sav savagery based on a new monotheistic religion. Moreover, clearly this future world is the consequence of contemporary failings in late 20th and early 20th centuries, as is the Book of Dave. Um, it, in, in the future, the adherents of Davianity insist that their holy text is the given, unalterable word. Self-evidently, this relates to certain current social and cultural beliefs visible in London and the violent practices associated with some of their adherents. As Appleby and Marty say, quote, fundamentalists lay claim to preaching and practicing the unvarnished word of God as revealed, in, as revealed in the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament or the Quran. This claim undergirds the fundamentalist larger assertion that their authority comes directly from God and thus their program for reform and transformation is in principle beyond criticism. A lot of people fudge that reality, but that is the fundamental relationship. <coughs> Self recognises this reality, and his novel is a critique of current fundamentalisms. The two time sequences are interwoven precisely to achieve such an effect. The future period, according to the new religion Davis Spawn, runs for a number of years, and as does Dave's current uh, <coughs> madness. His commentary includes, for instance, the following. At the beginning of the year, the cabbie had been clearing a minimum of 700 pounds every week. A flat fucking Neves, no joke, mate, double bubble for every Sundays. Then BCCI collapsed, gang of fucking cokeheads. It never looked like a bank to me anyway. I remember ferrying those dodgy wallers to their gaff on the Cromwell Road, all smirk and no bloody tips. And then the unemployment figure cranked up to three million. So it's about kind of collapse and crisis that, that, that ex exacerbates the condition of Dave. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna jump forward because I need to cut some stuff out. Um, in other ways, self-satire of the fundamentalist nature of religion is direct, explicit, more to do with contemporaneity. In the future's past, or the millennial world, ironically, Dave is a skeptic, running into an old Muslim school friend, Faisal, and is surprised that he is running a restaurant rather than having qualified as a doctor. And second, at Faisal's religiosity. Ironically, as a future messiah, Dave is dismissive of the religious views of both Faisal and his other fundamentalist Christian characters, like his aunt. In the present period, self's protagonist um, is useful for directing a certain strand of the satire. For instance, the section Getting Out From Behind the Wheel, February 2003, which is concerned with a Stop the War march in London and elsewhere in Britain, part of a larger campaign in which self himself participated. Dave worries about the radical, radicalism present, skeptical of the ambitions of certain participants. 
quote, through a scraggy barrier of trees and over the balding grass, with every yard they gained the compression of bodies grew greater. Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. I'm not racial, David admonished himself, yet their fanaticism smelled alien, a dangerous spice, saffron and suicide. Up ahead, the scene was Babylonian. Flags and banners waved, obelisks of speakers loomed on a stage. Only the yowl of feedback stopped the subsidence of this era into the last. So that kind of atavistic fear. Of course, self's narrative posits a future where this potential atavistic possibility has come about. The privileges and benefits of modernity lost. Day's reservations reflect in some ways those of self himself. And he explains as much in a piece that he wrote quote, called Looking Back on New Labour, published in The Observer in 2010. And I quote this for those who would like to see some sort of fundamental separation between self and Dave, that actually there is a kind of certain linkage here that I think um, it, it cannot really be do denied. Quote, within a few days of 9-11, Stop the War was formed and my wife and I attended a meeting. Even then I could see the groundswell of opposition to precipitate armed intervention in Afghanistan was already being surfed by Trotskyist opportunists and Islamist malcontents. Unless you're triangul a triangulating tactician, your enemy's enemies are by no means your friends. And while I remain steadfast in my opposition to the Afghan war, and even more stridently against the Iraq invasion, I soon had to decouple from Galloway and the virulent fringes of the Muslim Association of Britain. The low point came when, en famille, we set out on one of the anti-war marches and got trapped behind Hamas supporters chanting, death to Israel. We turned tail and marched to Shea Gerard for a steak lunch, very blary. And many of the other elements of the novel serve to exaggerate and thus accentuate uh, the contemporary um, just cutting forward um, if you consider the future in Ham which is distant from New London um, the atavism is moderated to a degree although the vocabulary is very misogynistic I mean we have a word for women which is mummies which indicates all women of childbearing age. So you've got this kind of, kind of, uh, you know, almost pre-feminist vocabulary re-emergent because of Dave's kind of influence. And dads, the term for all grown men, whether they're fathers or not, um, uh, who seek to uh, uh, moderate the excesses of this religion towards females. The most divine among them would not talk or look at the women folk and avowed that they did not even recognise the mummies of their own kids. Had these fanatics prevailed, they would have wrapped all the mummies in their cloaky things from top to toe. If the dads were to be believed, especially the two or three of them who could read, the book was all the understanding any hamster needed of anything. The book stood outside of the seasons and of the years. What David described he had also foretold, and what he had seen in his own era would come again for it had never really truly gone. Dave's new London was all around them, trapped in the zones and reef, a hidden yet still tangible world. The irony is that this also becomes a heresy or part of flying on behalf of those who actually control the religion. So they themselves become heretical. In his dystopic future, Dave, sorry, self reverses and mocks what um, Nelson calls the West's colonised transcendent, which romanticises pre technological cultures. In this elaborately medieval, medievalised future New London, you, you encounter what is clearly an appalling environment, environment. In this dystopia, scientific progress has not only been reversed, but it has been abandoned and declared heretical, demonstrating the pernicious qualities of what one might label a Taliban-esque set of belief systems. 